Traguna, Macoides, Tracorum, Sadisti! Deep cut. Uh. Greetings, witches, maidens, mothers, crones, warlocks, morlocks. It is I, Tom, and Galen. And we are here to present your 15 minutes of fume. I'm just sure. gonna joke that my name is Florence Pugh. I forgot. Everyone knows that you're not Florence Pugh. <laughs> hey you, it's been a while. I didn't recognize you because you weren't crying. Because I'm Florence Pugh. Oh yeah. There. <gasps> but then at the end I'm like... Um, I thought these earrings would be a fun glamorous accessory because they match my shirt and they're just kind of like tugging on everything and I'm just gonna be like this Catch, weird... Catching on your shirt. Stretched shoulders. out monster. Yeah, like, how do people do it? How do glamorous people do it? How, how do they do it at the Oscars? It's, it's a training process that they've been working on their whole lives. Glamour <sighs> is a lifestyle. I am simultaneously too lazy and too busy. We've already wandered off track. Where are we? We haven't recorded in a moment because <laughs> we reviewed everything and then we were taking a break. Um, Being real busy, doing the bottling. However, we do this year have a killer Valpurgis Noct collection being released by the lab in collaboration with Spiritus Arcanum, which is a website, a uh, purveyor of magical wares. Mwahaha. Um, we love Spiritus Arcanum. I believe this is our first collaboration with them. Uh, overdue, because in the past we've done Valpurgis Noct collections, etc. Um, but what says witches cavorting around a bonfire like groups of witches coming together to release magical products to seduce the masses into participating in our witchcraft. This year, uh, today in fact, the date when you are watching this video, we are, uh, which is the witch's night, the witch is preparing to ride. Uh, Spiritus Arcanum is releasing an exclusive set of four perfume oils created by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, uh, specifically for Valpurgis Noct. And uh, they're only available through spiritusarcanum.com, um, not through the lab. So if you're re refreshing our page, you're like, where can I find them? On the wrong site. Wrong site, my friend. Uh, consult the crystals, and by which I mean the liquid crystal display of your monitor that you're viewing this on, and uh, go to spiritusarcanum.com. So we have, we have the four fragrances. And today we are going to use them to call the corners, and uh, I mean, really, we're just going to find out what they smell like. So without further ado, which is something that I think we say a lot, and it's usually because there is so much ado. The video series uh, is mostly ado. 15 minutes of ado. It's, yes. Oh, this thing is itchy. Which is like 50 minutes of ado often. Today, not today, not today. We're right on task. We are organized boss ass girl boss witches who have four perfumes to review and just a short amount of time to do it in so um getting right down to brass tacks the first one we have is hexantons hexantons hazy clouds of bonfire smoke and dark resinous incense envelops the silhouettes of shape-shifting witches dancing around a blazing fire i know everyone's like yes yes just another Saturday night. Uh, black incense, wood smoke, sumac, turmeric, dried ginger, cassia husk, red cedar berries, seven year aged patchouli, wood moss. I misread that as weird moss. It's kind of weird. It's moss. A, a particularly weird moss. Really wood weird. moss and a blood red vegetal musk. Oh. Ooh. So this has a lovely, smoky, pungent punch right off the bottle. There's like a sweet, smoky, kind of, um, you know, a, a, a gnarled patchouli uh, coming through. I'm getting some of the incense. What I love about this is there's just like this faint bitterness, which I think is like a necessary component to any witchcraft blend because face it, we're witches, we're bitter, we're embittered. We traffic in strange herbs and roots and obscure forms of bitterness that we vent to other witches on social media. What are you getting? Just all of it? Oh, all of it. It smells like a crackling bonfire. It does. It I'm has, there. Yeah. More so I think than... I am there. 
the uh, normal Hexenacht scent that we've been releasing for Valpurgis Nacht, which, I mean, I like it and I trace the notes in it, but it doesn't smell that smoky to me. This is much more, okay, yeah, we're just putting it right on, aren't we? I gotta we're do just it. just like, I gotta know. I have to know. The dried ginger reminds me of one of my favorite bee pals, which I've talked about a bunch, which is the great he goat. Similar theme, which is Sabbath. Um, and that one has a smoked ginger in it that was just like a beautiful finishing note. Um, I love how the moss is just kind of like frame. It's like a proscenium of wood moss in the background. Yeah. It's there. I don't really, like, sumac is hard for me to track. I'm not rapping. It's just... Uh, and the turmeric is great because there's, like, a kind of, like, a little, um, like a... Again, like a weird spiciness that's just kind of just off of what you'd expect. And that's the trick, I think, with a good witchcraft blend is if everything is, like, beautifully organized and, like, layered according to, like, you know, aesthetic, um, you lose, like, the chaotic swirling madness of like a proper witch hootenanny mm -hmm. which this definitely smells like i keep thinking there's like oh yeah the red cedar berries what's interesting about this is there is this just kind of like burst of like almost like a fruitiness but it's nothing that ever kind of emerges as any berry that you've ever eaten i probably shouldn't eat them red cedar berry munchers out there apologies but um I love it. That kind of pairs with the blood red vegetal musk. So there's this kind of bloody dewy red like brightness that like never becomes truly like sweet. Mm -hmm. And the only real sweetness I guess I'm really getting is from like the uh, the cassia. So it's like a, a kind of a, like a spicy, dry, faintly sweet, smoky, resinous uh, throwdown. Can I smell it on yours? You want to trade? It's You're smoky. Yours smells a little cleaner, and I can't tell if your hands are just cleaner. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's like... Can mm -hmm. I smell your other hand to see how... Sm no, I guess that's... Let me see. Fascinating, fascinating. You, I think you're amping the moss. Oh. There's a, yours is like a little fresher Maybe than mine, and mine smells like I think a little more like infernal. I'm just going to stop pushing my hand in your face. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Hexantons. I will be wearing that. This is how you um, communicate purely by scent to others around you. Um, that they would be wise not to um, cross you or eat your house. Please stop eating my house. I love telling that story to my nephew because he just finds that to be the most insane detail that the house was made of candy anyway i love this so much that i'm almost reluctant to move on and that's just a great place to begin oh, but we must we but must we must we must especially we because things to say uh here emerging should we wait for the goddamn fucking constant onslaught of police helicopters to stop all right everybody coming to you on a beautiful little, little sunny los angeles morning sorry you, that's my you and i both know that's not going to end up being included radio it's kind of just having fun wait what is that over there there's something emerging from the darkness. Could it be oh. the man in black? You actually fooled me. I was like, what are you pointing? In the kitchen? Yeah. And I'm like... Very suggestible, this one. You just said it so, like, believably. I know. I, it's my job. Wow. Unbelievable. I, re I really believed it. The man in black. The devil at the crossroads. Well-worn black leather. Tobacco absolute. Haitian vetiver. Ambrette seed. Crushed tonka bean. And a flick of crossroads soil someone flicked it at you right in the eye oh Pew. right in the eye yes Ow. just a little grit i i feel like we should um dunk all of these lids just like in the sand just like a little bit so that when you open them it gets that kind of gritty crunch that happens when your bottles get dirty then you'd have Ooh. fucking sand Whoa. in your perfume why would we ever do that <laughs> you know Authenticity? Wow, okay, so this is like a sharp turn off into, okay, so obviously right off the bat, this is like a really sharp leather, which tends to dominate in the bottle, so. I love a leather, I love a tobacco, I love a vetiver. Um, Ambrette and Tonka bean, I got no problems with. I don't know, I got some on my hand. Crossroads soil, I'll take as much as I can get. A flick is probably all you need. So what I think is interesting is uh, where the, normally the uh, the leather might resolve and then go to somewhere like more warm or mellow. 
What's waiting on the other side of it immediately is the vetiver, just like, Bleh! So, um, yeah. it makes you realize how gentle you had it with the leather. And mm-hmm. then, only then, after that, after the jump scare of the vetiver, then I'm getting, like, tobacco and ambrette seed. And then the, the soil, what I think does, is actually just keeps it from warming up that much. It kind of, like, tamps down, you know, like, any kind of, like, really, truly, like, warm comforting like uh there's like a seduction happening here but it's like a rough seduction because it doesn't ever really like i mean it's just been a moment but it's gritty i love this yeah there's like no um mercy or pity in it this is not the man in black who's going to like you're going to sign the book and he's going to caress your cheek and then lead you off to his like you know which sister wife compound um, where you'll just be, you know, part of a close knit family of um, psychopaths. This is a like cold caress. <sighs> Fingernails only. Oh, I know, don't right? Do that to me. Sorry, I keep touching your face. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> the warmth on this is going to slowly build up as like some of these earlier notes kind of recede. I can tell there is a kind of like a nice. Honestly, this reminds me of, like, saddle leather. And that comes from a place of growing up, you know, farm adjacent and not from, like, a misspent youth in Greenwich Village situation. It's just reminding me of, like, the blankets and the straw and, like, the saddle. Like, I'm really getting, like, a equestrian vibe from this. Which, I mean, the man in black, it's not like he walked here, you know, so. He might have. I just maybe roller skated. He's got a lot of places. Ooh, it took a second. I just wondered how you would react. Uh, that blades. Was, that was interesting. Uh, yeah. Did you know that? I mean, it would make sense that the devil literally invented roller blades. Think about it. Oh, just gorgeous. It reminds me a little bit of that um, Leopold von what's his face <gasps> from yeah, the yeah. Uh, Seattle Comic Con forever ago that I still I stashed a bunch and I still wear. Number three. Number three is Osculum Imbame, which basically means the obscene kiss. The profane kiss. And this is from folklore that suggests that when you make a pact with the devil, you seal it with a kiss. Your lips, his rear end. Yes, it is the year 2021, and your favorite gothic perfume laboratory is on the airwaves hawking a perfume about making out with the devil's asshole. Bam! So... Oh, when you put it like that. Uh... You know, it's like actually very Gen Z, like all the kids are eating ass now. It's just like a thing. Um, I feel like we are answering the call and we're connecting them with their history. And it's just, I could, I could, I, I could get a tear to my eye. Well, what's it smell Just like? thinking about. So the scent is, uh, I'm really excited for this. This is one that we have uh, been meaning to concoct for quite a while. A scent of seduction transgression and danger you'll be fine uh crystallized sap candied red fruits raw wildflower honey black amber and sweet red labdanum and uh elizabeth our perfumer has specified that the scent is vegan because pacts with the devil should be available to everyone regardless of their dietary preferences and uh who can argue with that so it's a vegan honey note and whatever the source of the sap is is not an animal. Um, so I love like the sort of picture in words that we're painting here. Just gonna get in there for like a close nuzzle. Oh wow. It is bestial. Wow. Okay, what am I smelling here? Musk. <laughs> Fascinating. Is there musk? No, Wait, no, no, no musk is listed. What am I smelling? Yeah, and I was going to say oud, but no oud is listed. Unless it's like crystallized sap that could be coming from anywhere. I don't know. I think it might be the amber and the lobdenum that I'm There is an extremely smelling? raw, like earthy, earthy funk to this. Yeah. You know? Like this is definitely like a between the cheeks kiss. Um. And, like, I can sense things, like, rising up underneath. Like, there's a hint of sweetness, which is unsettling, um, coming from pretty much any one of these other notes. 
um, there's just nowhere to go but forward. You're already on your knees. You just have to, f you know, finish what you started. So let's um, let's put some of this miracle concoction right on the skin. Feel that? Sorry, gang. Very different upon impact. Like surprisingly so it's just like it's like sparks like there's like you've got your um flint and, and like you've got your tinder and you're like and then you spark it and it's totally different i can immediately smell the honey mm -hmm. and the sap and what was it a it berry? got it got much lighter and sweeter immediately but, yeah because like the bottle is a heavier experience oh is it heavy and it's still there this i find more enjoyable not that i wasn't enjoying the in the bottle but i'm like Okay, I would wear this. Yeah, because before, <laughs> before in the I bottle, like, ah, and even scared. underneath on the skin, there is like a gunk in there. There's some kind of like gunk. And now the gunk is balanced out with these kind of like, um, you know, it's almost like glittering. Hmm. And like the sweetness is, I, I'm not tracking this to candied fruits or honey per se, which I think, and I'm sure the amber is helping right. blur that. But it is lively on the skin, like lively and with like a sparkling sweetness. And then, of course, there's that like uh, slider bar that goes all the way down into the pits of hell. And that is like the gunk between the devil's hooves. And you can kind of smell it in stereo. Like you get the whole thing when you're smelling it. Yeah. It's really lovely. It's like it's dark and there's an evil to it, but there is a seduction. I was worried about that because in the bottle, just by the bottle, I was like, I don't know how seductive this is. This feels like I'm smelling this a little bit at gunpoint. I feel like I'm going to be smelling this all day. It's very potent. Can I smell it on you? Fascinating. It smells a little... There's like almost like a, on you, a kind of like a burning... But I'm not getting on me. Do you want to smell me? You just. Yeah, it smells different on you. Yeah. I'm uh, not really sure how or like what is. I mean, it's B pal users in general are used to this experience because this is how it goes, and there's lots of surprise victories and surprise failures. For newer customers, which I know we're going to get a bunch of because we're doing this for Spiritus Arcanum, just know that uh, skin chemistry plays some wild tricks. Uh, it's a little different on everyone. Also, uh, the great thing about perfume oils is you don't have to wear them just in the skin. You can like anoint other things with them. You can wear it in a scent locket. You can, um, there's ways of getting if you, the scent, like from the bottle, for example, if you don't like what it does on your skin. You could like spill a bottle in your bag. Oh yeah, that's a classic. have it uh, permeate all of the items in the bag. This would be such a fucked up perfume to spill <laughs> anywhere. Like, I People really... People will smell you for miles and this... be like, what is that? This is the kind of perfume I want to, like, <laughs> if, you know, I was mad at somebody, I would find a way to spill in their car. Because it's gonna haunt them for the rest of their life. It's, I mean, there's, like, it's unsettling. Or at least coat the, the door handles of the car with it so that when they open it, and then they, then they are, like... Oh, man transferring the oil all over the car with their own hands and they're just like, what's going on? I once pepper sprayed myself because there was a pepper spray in my dad's car that I was going to be driving and I moved it and then later put a piece of gum in my mouth and didn't realize that I had pepper spray on my fingers. Gum. And like within moments, my mouth was completely, it took me a minute to figure it out. I thought I would, you know, had been poisoned. Mm. And I had been by had myself. Been, yeah. Anyway, um, we've got one more. You've been waiting for this. Well, I started, it's just really itchy. Your whole life. Well, I've been waiting for this since the movie Midsummer came out. Yes. Now, of course, this is not a licensed Midsummer perfume, as much as we would love to do such a thing. But um, just going back to the traditions, the old ways from the old country, uh, we have a Queen of May perfume. Now, the Queen of May is described in the literature as an electric howl of dazzling spring blossoms. A rabid cacophony of bright, alluring, dew-splattered wildflowers streaked, streaked I say, with lightning white vegetal musk, an oil of youth, beauty, treachery, and liberation. So I bottled this. As did I. Uh, and I, I just bottled it yesterday. couldn't, I had read the notes, I couldn't believe what I was smelling. And I wrote to Beth afterward and I was like, this is one of the most evil smelling perfumes that you've ever made. And how clean and fresh it is. I mean... 
it just instantly oh, so takes innocent. me to a dark place. I get or no innocence it? from it. It's also not any specific flower. If you're worried about tracking this to like something that you hate, there's nothing like super prominent or recognizable is poking out here. No. It smells like venom, like flower venom. And it's that's like, just in the bottle. It just has like a very green quality to me. I don't know. There's that part in the it's movie fresh. Antichrist, the Lars von Trier movie Antichrist, where they're in the hospital and the camera does a long, slow zoom across the hospital bed to the vase of flowers and then all the way to the bottom of the vase to where like the stems are in water and then closer and closer and closer until you're like in the water and looking at the murk between the stems. Oh my god, I forgot about that. It's like, you know, it's funny because there are so many, you know, it's not as memorable as certain other parts of the movie. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of. So, <laughs> that being said, I'm going to put some... I'm a little rattled. Flower poison on my arm. Like, a sm as well, this I is a smell more. of youth is like a really interesting, like, cynical statement that... I find fascinating. It just has an, like an incredible edge. It's it's deep and dark, and damp. And yes, there are like florals, just kind of like you know, coming off of it in waves. You can find the sweetness, you can find the brightness, but for me, I'm just like it's. I feel like I am rolling in the deep. Did you pick out any particular floral note? No. I couldn't tell you anything. I mean, it's it's extremely green, and I'm going to say, I mean, there's like a grassy quality to it. Yeah. Maybe. And yet not. Like, it's, it is just like, yeah, I don't know. It's not like grassy, it's, but yet it is. It, it's shady. There's like a shady, shadowy, like, coolness to coolness. it. Coolness. Yes. You're in like a cool meadow by a... Dream? And you drank too much of the mushroom tea. And now everything's kind of wobbling ever so slightly. And you're remembering all of the terrible things that ever happened to you, and some of them are extremely terrible. Also, your boyfriend sucks. And he might be offered up as don't, a... People are... Don't tell that to people, because they're, they might be as suggestible as you. And they might actually be like, what? My boyfriend sucks? No, 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 no. Your boyfriend is not, you know part of the problem in this instance this is definitely just a drug that you took and the effects will pass and it's a perfume that you put on and you can wash it off and life is like better than this most of the time I know your flower wreath is itchy but you have to keep it on for the festival okay if Florence Pugh can do it I feel so like you, can you you just should keep wearing it and then eventually someone's going to make you the May Queen I have made myself the May Queen put a crown on your own head don't wait for somebody else to Be do it. Be your own May Queen. <laughs> Skin your own bear. Put your own boyfriend in the bear. Sew it up. Set it on fire. It does not take a village to do to accomplish most of these tasks. <laughs> All it takes is some determination. Um, okay, so the, what, more than anything, this reminds me of the dead blonde perfume because that had that same kind of, it was a wilted corsage situation. Something kind of watery. Yes, about it. and doomed. There and, was a doom, yeah. a doom in it. There is a doom in this perfume. <gasps> that is a good comparison. Yes, and that one had other notes. Like the it had freshness, the freshness, but also the something is sad yes. and sinister underneath. That it's had the tragic. suntan lotion and stuff though to kind of bring it into a contemporary place. And this does not have that. Yeah, and it's just kind of like out of time. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like this could read contemporary or classical, depending on what someone's references are. Um, or what you might amp on the skin. Mm -hmm. But it is a really interesting floral. And a, a, I would say on one hand, it's not as challenging as certain like floral blends. Because I know a lot of people are like, I just can't do that. It's not like really heady and bombastic. It has this like surprising depth. But you know, it is also not, yeah, it's just like, again, no comfort to be had. Uh, of, out of all of these, I would say the most comforting is the first one, the Hexantans, because it has that campfire base and there's something that kind of makes you feel... togetherness. Yes, warmth and togetherness. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go... With your witch sisters. To the man in black, and it's like, yeah, like a kind of a gritty, cool, dark, you know... The dark stranger approaches. Yes. Now you're going to another there's spell. There's a solitude to it. 
Where did I? Oh yeah, and then there's the um. And then there's me. Uh, you and the devil's rump. Yes, <laughs> it's just which is you know, it, it it's personal and there is companionship there, you know. <laughs> we should sell this with dental dams. All right, I'm done. <laughs> and then you get to the Queen of May, which is almost like there is like a, a festival quality to it. It's just like you know, it's the last. It's the cleansing after all of that. It's, there's a <laughs> gregarious quality to all of these notes, but also, like, she stands alone. She's the queen of the May. So that is the twirling uh, carousel of of uh, Valpurgis Noct scents that we have created and are selling exclusively through Spiritus Arcanum. It's like a magic spell, and then the words appear on the screen. woo uh, we will be very ah, curious <laughs> to <laughs> to hear other people's impressions of these, uh, especially if you are new to the BPAL world. We want to know, what's it like? Uh, and everyone should know that reviews of our perfumes can be posted and read at bpal.org. And usually if you just Google any scent name and then BPAL together, uh, one of the first couple of things that comes up is the reviews on bpel.org. They're always fun to sift through. Yes. It always makes you pick out new things or, you know, like someone else out there has said something that you were thinking and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. I thought that was just me. With a dash of who are these people? Right. So, you know, uh, what they're a, everyone. What they're a great everywhere. community to feel like an ambassador for, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I've been meaning to write some more reviews myself. I kind of lost track of it because look what we're doing all the time uh but we you know uh, we'll have uh reviews of the upcoming lunacy perfumes um we just got stuff to do so don't worry we won't be gone for long we missed you and we'll be back soon oh if you smell queen of may and then you smell uh hexanock it's like you know you are the may queen and then there's the fire and then they burn it all down oh midsummer I love it when you can tell Beth's been watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.